Hello, my name is Dr. Judith Rolfs, and I'm excited to share with you today some tips for being a super grandparent from my book by that title. Being a grandparent has been one of the greatest delights of my life. I hope that you would say the same if you have been so fortunate. I now have seven grandchildren and two greats. I actually had my first grandchild when I was in my mid 40s and I was still raising some of my own children. But nevertheless, I sensed right away that this was such a great privilege and opportunity to influence another life. And I think that's what grandchildren do for us. They help us to have a sense of wonder and awe in the world because we see things again through their eyes and it is just such a a great joy and i've done some things very well as a grandparent and some things not as well but i have learned some strategies that i hope you will find helpful and i've listed them in my book and you can see from the table of contents that there are many different strategies and topics that i cover here I'm going to tell you how I developed some of these secrets to being a super grandparent and how I have used them in my counseling practice with families to encourage other grandparents also to be deeply and intricately involved in the life of their grandchildren. Now that's not always possible and I understand that sometimes because of distance uh, we do have strategies in here for surmounting that problem. However, sometimes there are relational issues that make it impossible to be as involved as you'd like to be in the life of your grandchildren. But there are always some ways that you can connect that are so beneficial for each of your grandchildren. So the first thing about being super and the advantage that you bring to your grandchildren is that hopefully for you life has slowed down a little and you can bring a slower pace into their world which is often so helpful and the exciting thing about being a grandparent is that you are an adult in their life who is not necessarily hugely judgmental or in the role of correcting and disciplining you get to have a pure role of enjoyment with them and yet you do sense your responsibility for these little lives wanting to help them develop good character as well and I always suggest praying for God's wisdom because this is such a important interaction that you have and you can have a powerful impact. So the activities that are in here are ones that you can enjoy as well because being a grandparent should certainly be fun. And you are so important in their life. You are what they need, which is why God created the structure of families that he did. But you can view, actually you can radiate a different view of life through your maturity. You have managed to survive that hustle bustle monster I call that goes on when we have our young children in our home and we're pretty much often in survival mode. And you are, you've learned to kind of tame that hustle bustle and you can dote on your grandchildren, which parents often don't have time for. And also you get to help them develop their self-esteem without making them arrogant or spoiled because we certainly do want to avoid that. And that is the tricky part, of course. And what I like best is that grandparents can focus on the soul needs, S-O-U-L needs of their grandchildren and really grandparenting in some ways is the same as it was in the century when Timothy was taught by his grandmother, Lois, the principles for life. 
that are recorded in scripture. And he had such a great impact on the world. And it all began with a legacy that came through his grandmother. But the goal back then and the goal today is the same. To wildly, lovingly instill moral values in these little souls that are entrusted to you. And help them keep a sense of wonder that stays alive in them until they're old and gray. And that means you get to and need to maintain your own sense of wonder about the world. And in today's culture, it helps to know what you are up against. Certainly there are advantages that have come through technology, like the ability to Skype and FaceTime if you are at a great distance from your children. And also, of course, wonderful telephone calls. But at the same time, our life is so busy, filled with beeps and buzzes and also, our grandchildren are very busy and very tempted to be so involved with technology. Oftentimes, it's time with grandparents. It's like a break in that intense absorption with computer games and computer contacts and YouTubes. So you get to be involved in something more creative with your grandchildren, which is kind of developing some of their thought process about what's going on around them and to keep um, a peaceful demeanor. And as I said earlier, helping them slow down and focus on the days and the moments of their life instead of just having them rush by. So it's vibrant encounters that you can have. And let's talk about what some of those goals are now as a top priority for being a grandparent. And of course, character training is huge. Children have souls and bodies and minds, and they all must be shaped to function in our present world. And we get to help them learn courtesy and good manners and help identify the special talents in each of them that God has placed within them and encourage those after we point them out. I've had many opportunities to do this in the lives of our seven grandchildren. I always consider myself their greatest cheerleader and the greatest listener in their lives. So being a life shaper is an enormous joy and it's also a big responsibility. And it may scare some of you, but I hope not. I hope that it thrills you as well. Because you can do this. And the first thing to remember is that God chose you to be the unique grandparent of your grandchildren. Just as he chose those children to have the parents that they have. As imperfect as you may be or I may be, we have been chosen by God to have an impact on these lives. So do pray for wisdom. One of my favorite scripture verses is James 1, 5. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him pray to God for it and know that God will give graciously to anyone who asks. Wonderful thing we can also do is in a very kind and insightful way, warn our grandchildren of obstacles and teach them to be aware of uh, areas that they should avoid and help them become warm and loving human beings, not fearful in interactions with others, but willing to be patient and kind. So let's talk about being patient next. It does require patience to be a grandparent and to shape these lives. And sometimes you won't like what you see. And that's when it's important to hold the vision of this beautiful developing child in your mind and pray for God to make the potential within them visible to you and to them. 
Of course, parents always have the primary responsibility for parenting and controlling the destinies of their little ones. Nevertheless, you do have a powerful role in nurturing these children. And God will reward you for teaching his ways and his word to this new little generation within your sphere of influence. And it takes years. I bless now my oldest grandchild is 32 years old and I have had so many interactions through the years. I'm so excited to see the way that they develop in, in, in their love for God and their love for their siblings, for their cousins, for the family, which is the first unit that they all need to learn to function well in. Please don't be discouraged if you cannot have close contact as I was often privileged to have with my grandchildren. Some little tips I encourage grandparents to use, other than of course the basic things like Skype and FaceTime, are taking pictures of things you think your grandchildren might enjoy and sending them to them, whether it's something in nature, an interesting snake or snail or whatever. And, or when you're together with them, do take a lot of pictures and then you can send those as little memories to them. And you can make a slide or a video of yourself speaking or reading a story as I have done with some of my creative stories, unforgettable stories for kids that are very creative with moral lessons. And I've read, read them, videotaped it and sent them out to them, which has been fun. And at one point I made one that was a reminder for one of my older grandsons of some principles that we'd been talking about. And one of them, and I think all of you grandchildren need to learn this, life isn't always fair, don't brag on yourself, and show interest in others. So remember, whether you are near or far, you can maximize many opportunities to have influence. But the biggest thing you can do is always every day, and this is how I start my morning, I pray for each grandchild by name and for any special circumstances in their life that might require extra prayer. And you can, of course, compose your own prayers, which are always the very best, I believe. God loves to hear the inner workings of our heart. Or you can use one like I have in my grandparenting book, which is, Lord, guard my grandchildren today and list their names. Help them treasure truth. Help them accept correction. Practice obedience. Speak no lies. Be eager for learning. Keep my grandchildren healthy, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Help my grandchildren know, love, and serve you well. And know you, Jesus, as their Savior. Make, enable my grandchildren's lives to be great on behalf of your kingdom, Lord. So that's simply a, a prayer you can pray for your grandchildren or some variation of that but it's an excellent way to feel so connected in my heart with them when I do this. And we always, of course, pray aloud when we are with them, and we often end our prayer time with the Our Father. You know, not all families pray together and not every grandchild knows how to pray, but you can teach this by modeling. And praying together helps your children your grandchildren experience really true heartfelt prayer. Oftentimes when we're coming home from somewhere in the car at night, we will have a brief little prayer time together where each person says one line of prayer. And before bed, we try to say the Our Father together. What a blessing when our grandson who was in his 30s visited us when we were at a vacation spot in Florida and 
before he went to his room for the night, he said, well, Graham and Grandpa, let's say the Our Father together. And we're like, oh, right on. Yes, absolutely. So that's our very favorite family prayer. Of course, you want your home to be comfortable for grandchildren. And when they're little, you'll have a closet or cupboard, a basket full of toys and an area full of books for them. So they know the instant they walk into your house, they can speedily get right to their area and pull out things that they enjoy that are only there at grandma's and grandpa's house. And I call that a grandchild friendly house. And as the children got older, I started, and I, I recently had a message from one of my grandsons who is now 30 years old, remembering and thanking me for having things like special comic books, the old Archie ones, and having uh, a bin full of art supplies, drawing paper and pencils, and of course, keeping those pictures that they have done. And I recently sent one to a, a grandson in his 30s, just a, a little memory and to know that I had treasured what he made and it was really good, maybe to encourage some of his art giftedness as a hobby at this stage of his life. But if you have a grandchild friendly home, your grandchildren will feel welcomed and they will love coming there. So if there's any changes you need to make in your home, for your grandchildren to feel very cozy and welcome, like having a, a coat rack with little pegs so they can put their coats away. And I always had a little basket for their shoes. And I tried to teach little principles of order when they were in our home so that they could carry that through into the rest of their life. I always believe that order is helpful for children, uh, physical order around them because it helps them to put their mind in order as well with any kind of intellectual effort they need to make. But it's just a principle that we want to instill early. And one of the huge things is developing a sense of wonder. Simple fun outdoors and imaginative fun, anything creative, because we want those little brains to develop in that area when our two grandsons are, were eight and 10, I took them out looking for worms and bugs and fungus in the yard and we'd overturn stones or bricks to see what we could find and then draw pictures of our observations on the sidewalk. Or you might just dig a shovel full of dirt onto an unfolded piece of newsprint and have them examine whatever they find. And then you can look in an insect book and identify the bugs. And at one point I used some of my yard for the grandchildren to do special planting. Who doesn't love to get their hands? Well, not everyone does, but I think many of us like to get our hands into dirt and digging with a little spade and planting something any kind of garden, any kind of growth, something from nature is wonderful. And going for walks and identifying special things, or maybe simply growing mold on bread, which I seem to be able to do rather easily. Um, flying a kite, celery stalks in water with food coloring to show the absorption process. Um, all kinds of little mini experiments. You can even do that and record it and send the little video to your grandchildren if you're separated by distance. And examining the beautiful artistry in nature and pointing that out. The delicate spider webs. Uh, I, I know one time we were babysitting while our children, adult children, went on an anniversary celebration and we took the children to a park where there were wildflowers that it was okay to cut. Not always is okay, but it was there. And then we taught them to do some basic flower arranging when they came home and they made lovely displays for their parents to see when they returned. But we talked about the texture of the petals and 
rub them in our hands and against our cheek and smell the different fragrances. And don't forget about fragrant evergreens too. Of course, you wouldn't do this if your grandchildren have allergies, of course. But then we have the little artists draw or paint pictures on newsprint or art paper of the different leaves and flowers. I know our very littlest grandchildren, twins, when they were about two and three, when we'd take them for walks, they wanted to pick up little twigs and carry these twigs with them and examine them and touch them and just enjoy them. Oh my goodness, how wonderful at that age to find delight in a little twig. And actually, all of these things in the garden are sort of like what we do with our grandchildren. We are raising them, we are growing them, we are trimming them, pruning them, watering them so that they can flower in a beautiful way, a way that God intended for them to. So I would call some of our walks together, adventure walks, when we would walk along roadside trails or pass in the woods, and I'd say, what's the most amazing object we can discover today? And sometimes we would do history walks too, where we would imagine different times like we were Indians or pioneer settlers going through the woods and um, watching for dangerous animals. Children love, love to do wild, creative, imaginative things. And they also like play acting. So we'd always have clothes and hats that would be lend themselves to some kind of creative endeavor. And I would love to sit and be the audience for these little plays, minute, two minute, sometimes longer productions that they would put on. So all kinds of things to pretend and to play. And all of this is wonderful, wonderful interactions of mental synopses within the brain that are connecting and firing in the most healthy, wonderful ways. Because all of the experiences we have with them, we also want to be expanding their knowledge base. And if children just play electronic games, they really lose out. So I do encourage if games are played they have some of the wonderful board games that are available today. Some of them are historical as well, but a lot of them really encourage deep thinking and uh, memory development. So there's all kinds of ways that we can stimulate and promote their learning and have fun with it. But next, I want to take a moment to speak about conversation skills because those too need to be developed. And conversation is a skill that can be learned and practiced. And a favorite activity of mine with my grandchildren is one-on-one -on -one talks with them, asking them to keep eye contact by gazing into their eyes and have them listen hard for thoughts, but even more for the feelings behind the thoughts that are expressed. And older children can learn to observe body gestures. And, and I ask them not to think about what they're going to say next, but to focus on the speaker and then decide how they want to respond. This is a fun game. You can just make that into a joyful, sometimes silly thing to do. And I try to have a few thoughts of conversational starters to get um, some deeper conversation going. And I have a list here of 10 different questions that you can use, that you can adapt for the different ages of your grandchildren. And they are to stimulate conver conversation. Uh, some of them are just healthy processing of some of the emotions that they have right now. Um, What's your favorite game to play in the whole world? What would you like to try that you've never, ever done before? What's the most amazing thing you can think of to do in your entire life? 
How do you picture God? We've had some interesting answers to that. Children are so wonderfully honest and transparent. You can learn a lot, a lot about what your grandchildren think and feel by asking the right questions in a non-threatening way. I always say any answers are correct. It's just what you are thinking right now that we are sharing. And sometimes you can include their parents in these conversations. And you will be stimulated to think of some of your own conversation topics when you look at my list here. Because all of these things and all these activities, what we want to do is shape good behavior. Because that's really what discipline is. It's not so much the correcting spanking, it's shaping good behavior by giving good input and tips so children can learn how to obey, letting them know what your expectations are in advance for them, that you do prefer they not to yell and sometimes not to run if they are in the house, running outside is fine. And then also I encourage re repeating conversational expectations, things that you would like them to do no more than twice. Once is actually ideal. So that children learn to listen to you the first time that you say something or express the need for something to be done. Of course, you must have permission from your children, grandchildren's parents if you are to do any disciplining and hopefully you won't have to do much. But if you do need to, you need to have permission and you need to be equipped and ready to do that in a loving way. Because you will at times be tested by your grandchildren, just as they will test parents. And grandparents should not allow disrespectful behavior. You want to encourage your grandchildren to be self-expressive, assertive and creative, but never unkind or thoughtless. And there is a huge difference, of course, and when you talk about that and explain it to them, they can easily understand it. And using little rewards to encourage good behavior is fine. We all as adults experience rewards. A good worker experiences the joy of a paycheck to reward them. So there's nothing wrong with them as long as they're appropriate for your children. And I love the idea of clearly stating expectations because if you do that, then likely you are going to minimize any need for discipline. And I do list 20 expectations in the Secrets to Being a Super Grandparent that I think most children should be uh, able and should make an attempt to comply with because they are for their good and for the good of the family unit, which is also very important. Then there's also a chapter here on special ways to show affection. Uh, it's kind of fun when I haven't seen a grandchild for a while, I might say something silly like, I might burst with happiness, I'm so happy. Uh, be careful, I might be bursting. Um, Silly wordplay is really fun and children love it. And never turn away physical affection to a child, even if they have been naughty. That may be when they most need a, a sign of your unconditional love and a sign of God's unconditional love for them. Because again, naughtiness is a learning opportunity and it's to be used, but it's something that we never want to have them think that we withhold our affection from them. And sometimes I brag about the good things that our, a grandchild has done and I'll do that to their parents because those little ears are very much in tune and listening carefully. And it's a, a real blessing. They just kind of blossom when they hear good behavior discussed with their parents or, or maybe with a neighbor or someone who stops by to, to visit. I might share what 
one of my grandchildren is in the process of doing. And of course, manners matter. And as I said earlier, you are on the front line for this. So to enforce things as simple as not talking with food in your mouth, chewing with your mouth closed, not interrupting others when they speak, um, no heads bent over the plate, the food is lifted up to the mouth. That's something I have had one of my grandchildren um, had to remind several times about that, more than several times, but we're getting there. And encouraging thank you notes and by calling and thanking them at times, noting something special that they have done. There's all kinds of wonderful ways that in, in the moment to be ready as a grandparent to give that little direction to them because that is your role, not to pass it up and say, never mind, I'll let the parents deal with that one. I also like providing special little lessons, grandparents' little lessons. And because there's so many things we can teach to a grandchild in a few moments time. And sometimes maybe it's when we're waiting in line at a restaurant or waiting at the table for food to be served. And I do include some little lessons in the grandparenting book lessons from an egg and from a shield and from a, a, a crack in a, a pot. And you can use these lessons from a blue thread and lessons from a blueprint. And you can use them just as they are, or it can just be a stimulation for you to develop your own stories, little lessons. And that's why it's nice if you have the ebook version of Secrets to Being a Super Grandparent, because then you have this on your telephone, on your Kindle, on the phone app, and that way you've got it all ready to pull up and read for you in the moment. So do check out those little lessons and make up your own. And I have a chapter in here of dealing with grandchildren's fears. We need to be a comfort to our grandchildren. And fear can be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing if it keeps a grandchild from danger, but it's a bad thing if it blocks them from being fully engaged in their life or in a certain experience that's a good healthy experience that they should have. So we can discuss that with them. And first of all, make sure we clearly hear and understand what it is that they are most afraid of. I love to use Psalms to encourage grandchildren. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 91.5, this is a big favorite of mine. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. And do tell your grandchildren that every day you are praying for their protection. How reassuring for them to know this. And explain that it doesn't mean that nothing bad will ever happen. But they will have the power and wisdom to deal with any fear they face and ultimately all things will work out for their good because they have a loving loving god who is watching out for them and protecting them spiritual teaching is so important for your grandchildren and that's why i devote a large part of the book to that it's so important for children to begin to search scripture verses for themselves and to have some maybe posted in their room that are very meaningful for them. Um, like God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Every year on New Year's, I ask my grandchildren and my adult children to give me a list 
of any goals or any special prayer requests they have for the year ahead. And I do record those and I share them with one another. We share them so that I can very appropriately be praying for them. There's all kinds of ways to instill wisdom and to instill confidence in grandchildren. I think that's one of our huge roles to instill within them the uh, knowledge that they are capable and that they can do amazing things because God has purposed for them and gifted them to do and accomplish certain things in their life. And you believe that they can and they will do this. Some other things that we want to develop, and we're only two-thirds through the book, but I won't be covering every single page, but there's all kinds of topics in here that I think will be of value to you. Developing creativity. I love that, and I love the fact that my grandchildren have read my Adventures of Tommy Smurley books, which are about a young boy who thinks out of the box in wild imaginative ways and is an inventor and has amazing, amazing adventures in his life and uses his inventions to uh, experience amazing things. But I love that they're also getting the spiritual and moral principles that are in that book. And I encourage my grandchildren to write their own stories too. And, and sometimes we just talk those stories out, and that's really fun. And all of this helps them develop their own imagination. I love, too, for the grandchildren to experience some solitude at times, uh, 10, 15 minutes alone, maybe during a visit where I, I let them regroup or have a quiet time with a game or a book that they might want to be reading, and then we talk about it. So and in structure we do i do let them know what to expect when we have our time together what we'll be doing and uh, give them a sense of excitement and delight and, and joy to to know that we are going to have some fun experiences together i even list some creative art supplies to have on hand and give you some tips for making up those creative stories and some stories actually about your grandchild. I love to do that where I actually use their name and we I put them into a, a, a strange, different, but exciting setting. And then we talk about all the different characters that can come in. And sometimes we play interviewing games, pretending that they're on TV uh, and with a microphone and they can ask me questions and I can ask them questions. And I have pages of sample questions in here. And uh, quotes on creativity for them to encourage them. So there's all kinds of ways that we can impact our children's hearts and our children's minds. And most importantly, our children's souls. So I hope that you will take advantage of this simple tool that I have put together after my years of counseling families and my special experiences of being a grandparent myself of seven wonderful, amazing grandchildren. So look for this and it's secrets to being a super grandparent, which anybody can be and which God has designed in his beautiful plan of life that we should have this privilege of being a grandparent to the next generation. Thank you for listening and have an awesome day.